shield was a lot of moving parts. Guys like you with a heart. Now, you'll be the head. At one point, the filmmakers behind the MCU seemed to be positioning Nick Fury as the beating heart of the interconnected tapestry of films. And yet, it was Clark Gregg's Agent Coulson that captured the hearts and minds of Phase 1 fans. So when it came time for Marvel to start rolling out TV projects, why didn't they pick Nick Fury to be the protagonist of the show focused on the exploits of S.H.I.E.L.D., especially when Coulson was literally dead? These were in Phil Coulson's jacket. Guess he never did get you to sign them. In the early days of the MCU, Nick Fury, played effortlessly by Sam Jackson, and his S.H.I.E.L.D. organization were the main way the filmic universe was woven together. Fury seemed to be the linchpin in all of it, seconded only by his right-hand man, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent named Coulson. Throughout the first phase of MCU films, Coulson was basically just an expository device, but fans took to him. So when he was dispatched by Loki in the second act of the initial Avengers film, fans were very upset. And yet, they wouldn't have to wait that long for Coulson to return. I'm clearance level six. I know that Agent Coulson was killed in action. Welcome to level seven. After the roaring success of Joss Whedon's The Avengers, the Buffy creator was brought on board at Marvel to act as a creative consultant on all of their projects. On August 7th of 2012, it was announced that Whedon would be involved in the creation of a TV project based on the highly secretive governmental agency known as S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, for the sake of clarity, S.H.I.E.L.D. in the comics and S.H.I.E.L.D. in the MCU are slightly different beasts. Aside from the fact that their acronym stands for literally different things, the show Incarnation moves decidedly away from the Black Ops governmental agency fairly quickly, with it being revealed that the S.H.I.E.L.D. organization has been secretly puppeted by HYDRA the whole time. I thought HYDRA was defeated after World War II. HYDRA always comes back. Cut off a head, two more will take its place. At the time of the show's production, Kevin Feige's film division and the television division were feuding, meaning that continuity could only travel one way, down. Thus, the major changes in the filmic universe could affect the shows, but never the other way around. And this logic also restricted shows like Agent Carter and S.H.I.E.L.D. in their access to marquee names like Nick Fury. Obviously, in a perfect world, Fury would have been the protagonist. But even in this more restricted scenario, Fury should have been the man in the shadows, constantly working behind the scenes. He should have been the deus ex machina, or at the very least, he should have been the character supervising the team of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that we follow on a week-to-week -week basis. And yet, in the show, he's only in two episodes out of seven seasons, both of which happen in the first season. This is the last time you'll be seeing me for a stretch. You're gonna disappear. Nowhere to be found. The Nick Fury in the films and the Nick Fury in the comics are significantly different entities. Nick Fury in the comics is a Caucasian man who rose to fame during World War II, who has been given an experimental serum dubbed the Infinity Formula, and is virtually immortal, while the filmic version of him only retains his duplicitous yet heroic man-behind-the-curtain attitude. So that begs the question, why wasn't Nick Fury the protagonist of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Considering the comic book that this was based on is Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, there's a few things here. One, the logistical hurdles of getting Sam Jackson into a network TV show were high. Two, the previously mentioned film and TV show divisions conflict. Three, Coulson was a fan favorite character. And finally, four, Whedon had just killed Coulson off in the first Avengers film, so bringing him back in this TV show allowed him to make a big splash almost immediately. You were dead for days. That's impossible. Director Fury moved heaven and earth. But none of those reasons deal with the fact that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a big show conceptually that never quite lives up to its potential. The constant end-of-the-world threats, the deaths and rebirths of characters, and the secret time travel plots all feel unwieldy and too far-reaching for the narrative canvas that the characters can supply. Agent Coulson being the prime example of this. In his initial conception, Coulson was just a bureaucrat, a middle management pencil pusher. But Clark Gregg did such a fantastic job with this role that he charmed audiences and Whedon and willed himself into more and more screen time. So when he's brought back and given this insane alien resurrection backstory and multiple heroic sacrifices, on a subconscious level, it just never sits right. Sacrificing himself to give Daisy Johnson the serum she needs to defeat a supervillain, or making a deal with the devil to become the Ghost Rider to save his friends, those feel like fury moves. You can't kill me. Maybe not but I'm pretty sure he can. And therein lies the true problem with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s patriarch. 
The show's creators, Whedon, his brother Jed Whedon, and Marissa Tancheron, never truly came up with an idea for how to use Coulson other than just writing him as baby Nick Fury. And Clark Gregg is a great actor, but he just isn't Sam Jackson. When asked about the character in a 2013 interview with Entertainment Weekly, Whedon said, The idea of Coulson as the long-suffering bureaucrat who deals with Tony Stark's insufferability is delightful and hits the core of something I'm almost writing about all the time, the little guy versus the big faceless organization. And that's what Clark Gregg embodies, the everyman. That's exactly the issue. Coulson is an everyman in his MCU film appearances. And then, when he's resurrected for the small screen, they try to pivot him into being the new Fury, without ever really setting up the narrative infrastructure to support that change. We are not agents of nothing. We are agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that has to carry weight after everything we've been through. That carries weight! That lack of forethought and inventiveness extends to the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as a whole. Anyone who's read the comics knows that the show should have been an adventure of the week spy show with an overarching Hydra plot running in the background. In fact, longtime Nick Fury Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. writer artist Jim Steranko was so frustrated by the early seasons of the show that he wrote an op-ed for The Hollywood Reporter calling the show the perfect example of frustration, apathy, and disappointment. This lack of vision for the show can be seen in just how often it rebooted itself, which was basically every season. Over its seven-season run, it tried to make the Inhumans a thing, pivoted to Ghost Rider for a season, then went to space, then did time travel, then did more time travel. I mean, I knew it wasn't really in black and white, but still, now I know how you felt. It's a blast of the past. So how could Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. have been fixed? Well, the first step really could have been just incorporating Fury into the cast in some way. Even if he was the Skinner to Coulson and Maze Mulder and Scully, that would have helped build a narrative hierarchy that could have enabled Coulson to grow and develop into a protagonist as opposed to the bizarre immediate jump that he undergoes from the beginning of the show. Overall, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a bland and somewhat disappointing viewing experience that could have been great if just a few minor tweaks were made. The rift between the two silos of the MCU is the ultimate villain in this story, as many of the creative, character, and visual choices the show made were in direct response to the things the movie side was doing. And tragically, a high concept that is tailor-made for a serialized TV show was squandered. But as we know from Coulson's many deaths and resurrections, nothing stays dead forever. So who knows? Perhaps there's a new Disney Plus streaming show that will feature the S.H.I.E.L.D. cast just around the corner. And maybe this time, it'll be good. And well, that's all we have for this episode. What do you think? What was the best part of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Let us know down in the comments below, and as always, like and subscribe for more videos just like this one.